already. So you already you've already done your color tower to practice. So you can use this to match. So if you're if you're not sure where the value is going to be, you're going to match the little value here. So if I'm looking at the background of my hand, look at that. See how it matches? So I can see the background will probably be one, two, three, four, four or five. So I'm going to go to my palette. I'm going to take my white out. And I, the boards are a little bit larger than the final piece, so we'll trim those up when we're done. I'm going to need a little bit more red for that. Well, no, you're going to paint the board that you transferred it to, but we're using the picture to draw, to, to look at as reference. So look, see, I, I took, everybody has your notes, right? So you, you, you use this as reference to see the level of darkness. You see up here, I'm doing it. So I think that the background will probably be right around here. So now I'm gone to my palette. So I'm going to do my background red and my hand blue and white. So, we, so now I'm going to come in and start painting. And it gets lighter as we go to the top. So I'm going to leave that open and just focus on getting that color established. It gets darker as it goes down. So I'm trying to get that medium value built in. You can go in any order you want. You can paint the hands first and then do the background. Your background doesn't have to be different. Your background, it could all be all one color. I just felt like doing both colors. Patriotic colors for the flag. So you can see my value gets kind of dark. It's right above the, the two, my pointer and middle finger. And then it gets darker as it goes down. So I added more red to my color. Bless you. Remember, you can use as much paint as you need to. If you run out, you don't have to ask me for permission to get up and get more. Uh, no, well, if you want to keep it all blue and white, your background would just be dark blue. So I'm doing my hand blue, but yet we have to paint the background in two. I'm just, I'm just choosing two different colors. We don't want it to be blank. So see, I'm blending those two colors together because it's wet. This is the called fresco, al fresco. When your paint is wet and wet on each other, you should be able to blend easily. Remember, when you're using your brush, don't push down hard. Push, just be gentle. It's all, we're just doing, translating the value. And on the very bottom, I'm not going to add shade into my red. I just want it to be bright. So I'm just keeping mine pure red. 100% saturation. So 
For the background, I would use a, a, a larger brush, too. That's going to go faster. To get the edges, another trick is lift up your board. You should be able to... Okay. Now you can see I have a pretty even fade. So if you can start in any direction you want. I just started with my background first. But you can start with the hand first, whatever, whatever feels right for you. Please try to get like even coverage. So we see the color and not the white of the board. We don't want it to be transparent. Just want smooth bands of color. If you need a different size brush, I have plenty. Anything you need. Some areas that were a little too dark, so I'm blending my paint is still wet, so I'm blending in the white and just fanning it back and forth. So it blends in evenly. And do the same thing over here. I want my sides to be somewhat even. There we go. That's a good, pretty good background. And instead, because of COVID, we don't want to, I know some people try to take their mask off and blow on it, but you can just do this. Look, you can fan your board and that will dry your piece. Okay. I did my background first, but it's probably going to be easier to do your if you're doing hands, do, do the hands first. And now, when, when you're doing your hands or your eye, you're just thinking about value. So again, you can use your color tower to match it. Um, but to, to tint your color, remember to make the lightest tint possible, you're going to add your color to white and that gives us a, a lighter shade that we're trying to match on our paint. So see here I go, I'm going to start putting in my If I want to incorporate letters later I could, I could do font I 
I have detail brushes for lines for the for the creases that you could use. If it's too dark, you can actually add white and lighten it up. You're just trying to match You might need to, to use smaller brushes too for the details anyway. So if you need to move to a smaller brush, feel free to, to, to get the whatever you need. So I'm just moving around my picture and I'm putting in highlights first, everywhere I see it. I'm looking for similar highlights anywhere I see it on my picture, and then I'll move to the next, the next layer. I have these detail brushes, it's kind of hard to see, look how thin the lines are. So after you get the value in. You could use these for like eyelashes and details, like the lines across your finger. So I put my highlights in first. Take your time, this is not due today at all. But I'm doing my first layer of highlights all over the entire hand. That way it's easier to make corrections because I don't have to keep remixing paint. I just noticed I missed a spot. drawing because you're going to see paint strokes, so don't get frustrated when you see paint strokes. That's what you, you're supposed to see paint brushes, the paint brush marks, okay? After I get my highlights done, I'm going to start adding blue to my, more blue to that color, so I want it to get darker. 
I'm going to start adding the shadows. So remember I already outlined where a lot of my shadows are going to be so I can even start putting those in. And it's not going to be dark. I might this is really dark on that top part so I have to make it a little bit lighter. It's just like when we did the spheres, it's the same thing. We built, you know, slowly increasing the saturation from light to dark. And the nice thing about this paint is that you can always make corrections and and fix it up. Remember, if you need to move to a lighter brush or smaller brush, I have detailed brushes up here. There should be some up there as well. The detail brush is going to let you get uh, more of that line work in. Put the top of my nail. The creases of my fingers. Slowly increase that that edge. You can see the top of my finger is already starting to come together. And you're using that picture as reference. One thing that uh, is that you're, you're going to quickly learn too is that. Um, paint is really forgiving, so you can always paint over anything that you've already done. So don't get frustrated if, if something is not turning out the way that you want it to. Remember, I'm here to help you, so don't be afraid to ask at any time if you need me to come over and show you. But if, you can, if you guys can tell, see I'm going light blue. To medium blue, and now I'm put, I have my detail brush, and I'm coming back in, and I'm putting in the darker areas. If it helps you to go to do the dark outlines first with your detail brush, you could also do that. This is basically how you do all painting. It's all about value and color. Which is different from drawing where you can erase. If you need help finding a detail brush or anything, I'd be happy to help anybody that needs it. I've got tons of detail brushes up here too.
try to only use water to clean out your brush. If you notice, I really I don't even have water. I want to get nice coverage with the paint. And I'm actually going in now. My hand gets darker as it moves down the composition. So I'm just going to move to the main, mainly outlining. I'm getting all those basic shapes that can blend. Top, I didn't really put an outline because I want it to look lighter. Anybody want music playing or does not put anything on? Got for my tattoo it's gonna be lighter, so I'm gonna do a lighter blue. I'm just trying to match that value. The nice thing about this paint is that it's pretty forgiving, so we're just trying to imitate the value that we see on the picture only. I know allergies are terrible today, so if anybody needs Kleenex, I've got Kleenex for you at the front of the room. I'm putting that shadow in for my wrist. It's a little bit dark. quicker than I thought. Like I said, this is not due today, so please don't feel like you have to rush. Trying to get as much detail as possible.
your paint starts to get dry, you can also add water to it to smooth it out. You get cleaner lines a little bit. That is our cleanup bell for today. Remember when you are, uh, we're just going to stop for today. And um, I do have a uh, drying rack ready for us. 